Hey Shalom guys, today I just wanted to do kind of a little behind the scenes in depth thing of my album because I've done some of these before but they really haven't been that well good. This album I worked so hard on and it's like the proudest piece of thing I've ever created easily. I just kind of want to give more of an in-depth look into it. So the intro to the album is called Purgatory. I kind of struggled with the name of it for a while. I thought about just calling it intro or something. I think Purgatory was the closest thing I could fit to this. So I did, I did have some trouble with the name. The clip is stolen YouTube written by the name of Brandon Calvillo. Brandon Calvillo, honestly, I think is one of the more underrated YouTubers. He's starting to get a little bigger and you've probably seen him in David Dobrik's vlog. Video titled like 2018, have it, you should go watch that video. That video is phenomenal because it talks about how humans always feel like they're fucking up nature and then you, like this dude ends up meeting God and he was, God's kind of like, you are part of nature. So why, why would you be mad? And he makes a really good point, like a bunny doesn't care if a rat or a bunny doesn't care if like a deer dies, so why would we care if another animal dies? I just thought it was super interesting, super introspective. I gave like a new look on like basically nature in general. Kind of talked about how the meaning of life is just find somebody and love them. The whole theme of this album is it's a breakup album. There's no way to hide it, no way to kind of go around it. It's easily a breakup album. Easily a breakup album. And that's what like 50% of the album is about. It's about breakups. So I thought it perfectly fit everything. As soon as I heard it, I was like, I heard this like months ago. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, that's gonna be the intro to my album. Cause it was just, it's so fucking good. The first actual track on this album is called Phantom. Phantom is a character or an alter ego of Ned Rack that is trying to keep Ned Rack focused on this one person from the breakup. Ned Rack is kind of arguing with the Phantom. He talks about how the Phantom is kind of leading him down this corridor where the pictures are still up on the floor because he's like, hey, you still gotta deal with this. You still need to, like, you still love her type thing. So that's where the idea of the Phantom character came to life. Fun fact, there's actually a third verse to Phantom that I did not put on the album because it ended up getting deleted, but I think I could find it. So if you guys want to see the third verse from Phantom, leave a like. The next song is called Monsters, in parentheses, We Are, it's We Are Monsters, whatever you want to call it. This actually was kind of a weird song. For me. I just kind of wanted, like, I heard the beat and I was like, this is... This is dope. And the biggest thing for me is I kind of just wanted a song that's like sort of like kind of deep but sort of just simple and more focused on flow and like the rock vibe to it. But it ended up, I was writing to it and it ended up being like one of the deepest things I've ever written. Uh, it's got one of my favorite lines I've ever written on there which is uh, find a way to shoot you even if you think you're bulletproof. Find a way to move you even if you think you'll never move. I was writing that and I was like, I don't know why that line just kind of stuck out to me. Find a way to shoot you even if you think you're bulletproof. Like nobody's invincible, no monster quote unquote is invincible, you can be taken down. And then uh, I actually only had one verse written for the longest time why I just kept having like this feeling about another breakup, uh, one of my best friend's breakups actually. One of my best friend's breakups that happened honestly like two years ago. So, like I still feel slightly guilty for that breakup a little bit because I felt like I almost got in between him and who he was dating at the time. So I kind of fit the song for me, so I kind of started writing with that. I do mention them by name. I just felt the need to write about it, so I wrote about it. The second verse ended up being super, super, super personal. Two tracks go together. One's called April 26th Intro. The next one is called April 26th. This is probably the most personal song on this album. I started writing it the day after my breakup. And what's weird about it is I actually planned to do only half that song and then I was gonna send it to my buddy Weston and have him finish it out. Me and Weston are actually gonna work on a different song together. I just decided that because it's such a personal song, it's the, mo it's the most personal on the album easily. Because it's such a personal song, I was like, I'm gonna write the rest of this. And I ended up writing the first half the day after my breakup and then writing the second half about a month or two after. It, it's one of those things where like, if you know me, you, you know what the lyrics are about, it's pretty fucking obvious. Definitely showed the deprecation of myself after the breakup and how, like how low I felt right after the breakup. The next song is called Wish I Hated You. I wrote it probably about a month after the breakup. It's again about the breakup. It's a broader song though. It's not as specific and not, it doesn't, doesn't say anything specifically about the person. The first line is driving through my city and I feel like I'm inadequate. Cause I, I was just, you know, honestly when I heard the beat, I was, I was in my car and I was driving and I was just driving and I'm like, man, I feel like a piece of shit. Like I just, I just felt so bad about myself. And so that's where the first line came from. I wrote it and I was trying to figure out what to call it and I was like, man, I hate this so much and I was just thinking, I was like, like I knew who the song was about and I was like, man, I just, I wish I hated you and that's where the song title came from, it just, 
kind of came up. Second verse is more about like like you were gonna listen, you were gonna give a shit a fucking all. Like, that's actually kind of more about the actual music. I'm like I, I I I debated whether to put this on the album because I was like I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, make her her feel bad or anything. At that point, I was like, she's probably not going to fucking listen to the album. So I doubt she's going to listen to this album. So I'm like, fuck it, I'll just I'll put it on there. The next one after that is a song called Rainbow Colors. This is actually the last song I recorded for this album. Yeah, I like this song. I love this song. It's, it's kind of a coming out song, which is actually perfect for this channel. About two things, me coming out of the closet as being bisexual. The first person I was attracted to was a guy, so I just thought I was full gay, told everyone I was gay, and just kind of went back and forth between gay and bisexual. The first verse is kind of about my music, to be honest. That's how like people used to say like you're too fucking ugly to be a rapper, you're too you're too ugly to make music, you, you, your voice sucks, you know, like you never be able to do that. And it's kind of like I always wanted to do what I wanted to do. Just wanted to have my rainbow colors and have my rainbow colors. Kind of just me getting quote unquote getting my stripes in both music and homosexuality. The next song is actually a song that came out like two months before the album came out. It, it wasn't a single. I didn't intend to actually put it on the album. It, it kind of fit the album. This song is not about the person that the album is about. This song is about a completely different uh, girl. And then it was like 2 a.m. I was falling asleep and my other ex texted me and was like, hey, what are you doing? We should talk. Like whenever your ex or somebody you don't want or a stalker or something is texting you and you're just like, no, 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 no. And then you try to text me and I'm like, no, bitch. No, 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 bitch. No, 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 bitch. That's probably the cringiest thing I've ever done. It's just how you feel sometimes. Like, you're just like, somebody texts you and you're just like, no. It's kind of an anti-love song, I guess. But it, it's, honestly, this one is just about fun because I actually, the second verse is about a day that me and my friends were all just drinking at the pool and it was, it was just a super dope day. It just kind of came together. So it, it fit the album enough for me to put it on it. So I was like, fuck it, let's put it on it. The next song is actually, I recorded three songs and ended up scrapping two of them before I even like started to kind of construct this album. The song that stuck is the song, Call Me When You're Ready. It's the only song is that technically, if you don't count the other two, the very first song I recorded for this album. Kind of the story behind it is about the same person that the whole album was about, besides No No No. The song was written probably like two weeks after my breakup. I'm not gonna get into the breakup. I'm just, I'm not. I'm not gonna make a video about it. I don't want to, I don't feel the need to. I'm kind of touching the surface of it real quick that she told me was she just felt like she wasn't ready. So this was kind of like, this was when I was still kind of in denial that we had broken up. I, uh, this song is just kind of like, call me when you're ready. I don't feel the same way right now or anymore about that. I prefer her if she didn't call me when she was ready. That's, that's what, that's what was going through my head. Call me, call me when you're ready. Like, let's, like, fuck all this other like drama shit. Let's just do this, right? Me and this chick had an inside joke that like, I was her sugar dad. And not that I bought her anything super expensive, but like, anytime we go out, I would always pay or whatever. And it, it never bothered me once. It never bothered me until we broke up. Then it started to bother me a little bit, but I mean, I I, I don't care. So I, I do address that in there. But like, if you ever want to be back, it would just be because I paid for everything and made life slightly easier for you. So that's what the vibe of the song is kind of all about. The next song, the song I originally wasn't going to put on the album, but again, it was about the same person, so it felt fitting to put it on the album. The song is called Crazy. I do it with my boy Jaden. I honestly really like the verse on it. I wish I would have done a little bit more with the production of it. Um, I think it was okay produced, but I think I could have done a little bit better on mixing and mastering it. Maybe I'll do a remastered version. You guys want to see that? Leave a like if you do. After the breakup, I just literally felt fucking crazy. Like, Two Z's. That's why it's got two Z's in there. I was doing things knowing that I felt crazy. And you know, usually you'd think that would be able to stop yourself. But like, I just, I couldn't. I couldn't bring myself to not do these crazy things. When I was writing it, I just, I was so angry. I wrote this one pretty quickly right after the breakup too. She made me feel like she just didn't care. You hear that in the very first lines, because it's like, you don't really care if I get fucked up and overdose. You don't really care if I end my life and into a ghost. I really wish you cared. And it, it, it's a very blunt song, I'd say. This album is kind of the five stages of grief. You kind of hear it spread throughout the album. His verse is about something completely different. I can't speak for Jaden. The last song is called Ode to Being Happy. Second to last recorded thing right before Rainbow Colors was recorded. This is the only song that I mention her by name. I love the vibe of this song. No other instrument besides one piano ballad. So it's kind of a ballad. When I was writing it, I was thinking of the title. It sounded like me giving up on just happiness in general. I called it the ode to being happy. So that's kind of what it was. It was kind of me giving up on relationship. It's kind of awkward because it just kind of cuts out. With my last fucking breath on this album, 
I bore my windows up and I ain't never coming out, son. So just know this is my ode to being happy. I, I thought, I was like, this is the fucking perfect album closer. Got the right mood for it. It's a ballad. Got the right name for it. It, it says with my last fucking breath on this album. I was like, this is, it's so perfect. So that's why I put it the last song. Because originally I was going to put the remix as the last song. But after I was writing, finished writing this, I was like, this. It's too perfect to fuck it up. So that was kind of like my in-depth thing for this album. If you guys have any comments, questions, or anything, leave it in the comments below. And other than that, stay beautiful.